Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the Manosaurus Wed scamming his subscribers for Pico points and or money, which it converts into. So today, I think a lot of us can agree that Pico Trade, you can call it a scam, a pyramid scheme. There's something that's not quite right about it. The creator of Pico Trade in a video said that it will always be a dollar for a hundred points. Eric, you can watch the video. It is a video where he's trying to get investors. He does very well. He makes out about five million dollars from this scam, pyramid scheme, Ponzi scheme, whatever you want to call it. But someone else who made out very well was the Mana Source. So the Mana Source had been pushing Puka Trade extremely hard. And when I went on his Twitter feed, I found evidence, I found a tweet where he actually made a Pico Trade video and then tagged Pico Trade telling them, hey, this would be something that you're interested in. And that's how the sponsorship happened. So unlike Pico Trade trying to sponsor me where they're actively said, okay, let's sponsor this guy. The Mana Source did the reverse. He went, he made the video, said all the nice things about them, and then tweeted them the video he made. And as soon as they saw the video, they loved it, and they were all in. Chips to the table. This is the mana source. I signed up for Puker Trade because you said you loved it. Been there a few months and not a single trade my way. I was pretty disappointed. I traded some stuff out, and now I feel like I'm stuck with the points. This is the majority of Manosaur subscribers. He doesn't want you to know this, but he convinced all his subscribers essentially to gift him money and points and then not receive anything. So let me just be very clear here. The original $1 for 100 points is more like $1 for 300 points now. That meant that you lost 66% of your value. There are very few things you can do to lose 66% of your value in Magic the Gathering. Rotation is probably the only one that I can think of. Even a reprint normally doesn't, like a, a reprint of Liliana is not, not going to tank something that hard. So recently, Wedge has been really big into uh, MTG Finance, uh, Post Rotation Finance Guide. Best magic cards to buy now. Let's see, what else? 10 top 10 best commander cards to buy now. I mean, let's be honest here. When you take financial advice from someone who doesn't have an income or doesn't report taxable income, doesn't have health insurance, relies on GoFundMes for his health insurance, and makes, I mean, makes terrible decisions. I mean, if you're going to go buy Mythic Editions and you're going to buy foil uncut sheets, uh, rares and Mythics of the new set, you can be a little more humble about it, right? You don't need to show it off to get those likes because it comes off as wrong since 100% of your income is related to your YouTube. I would say 90 to 95% of your income is donation-based. He's never had a job before. Uh, he claims that he cannot hold down a job because he has IBS. Um, I doubt he has a 401k. I doubt he has any retirement funds. I, he lives at home in his parents' basement. Like, should this guy be giving you financial advice? And the reason I'm going to be really hard on him was because in a previous video, he said to, he said that it would be a good investment or a good buy to buy Creeping Tar Pit from TCG Player in the same video that he's telling us Creeping Tar Pit is reprinted and reprinted cards will go down in price. Does that make sense to you? Like, why is he promoting Ultimate Masters? Is it because TCG Player makes money from this? I think so. I mean, I see, I buy, I sometimes buy stuff from TCG Player. And you can buy boxes and packs and top lo top loaders. Here he says in 2016, disappointed in some of our viewers today. Don't like Pico Trade, no problem. But telling me I made a video solely for points, unbelievable. 
So let me get this straight. You made a video about Ultimate Masters, how awesome it was, and then in the, towards the end of the video, there is the advertisement for TCG Player to buy Creeping Tar Pit for fifteen dollars. What was the point of this video? Was it to sell Creeping Tar Pits for fifteen dollars before they tank to three dollars? I'm going to butcher. You know, it's kind of like a cow, right? A cow can moo and eat some grass and be happy. But this is like a, a, a sick cow. And the sick cow is saying all these like really ridiculous things to the other cows. And the other cows are not smart enough to understand these are ridiculous things that are being said. Especially if the whole point, you know, the whole point of this video is to sell us creeping tar pits for $15 before the reprint. Uh, you probably should uh, take the rest of the video with a grain of salt. So he made, he used to make these videos about Pico Trade like every month. What was it? Like every two weeks, he would make a video tr about some of them were deleted. Uh, he deleted the majority of them, like Tolarian Community College and like the monthly Magic Box. It's hard to get these older videos which show you the true nature of the beast, if you will, because they delete them all. I mean, yeah. It sucks that I don't have more of those videos, but I remember specifically him saying, I mean, the one thing he didn't delete because he's probably too lazy to do so is his Twitter feed. So a lot of these videos I have on him are about his Twitter feed. And I don't make up the stuff he's saying. This is stuff right from his mouth. I don't deny getting referral points. It's more the principle. Like if I would risk my integrity after all these years for that, when I hear someone call Pico Trade a pyramid scheme, I take from it one thing. That person doesn't understand basic economics at all. 6.05 a.m. I mean, how, this guy is, I mean, how often is it for this guy to get up at 6.05 a.m.? I mean, think about that for a moment. That's like working hours. That's like if you have a job, you get up then, right? Like I have a job. That's when I wake up, walk my dog, and then I go to my job at 8. Driving to town. So his job is to defend Pico Trade, right? Like, follow me here. And a lot of you say, oh, you don't have evidence of collaboration and all. No, I do have evidence. And my best evidence is Pico Trade made him, <laughs> made his subscribers a page with his logo. Like, it's unbelievable. You have to understand how much money they gave Wedge to promote the product week in and week out, week in and week out. And he's reading these comments and his, the same thing with the monthly magic box. He read these comments and he said, no, I don't believe my subscribers. They're dumb. Let me keep making videos. And that's what happened. That is what happened. This is a referral program, but it's secondary to the actual function of the website. This is. So we're talking about how Pico Trade is operating. You know, Wedge has said he's an economic genius. He's telling us what magic cards to buy. If he's an economic genius, nothing in Pico Trade has changed except its website. So, and it could have always gone back to its old website if it wanted to. So if they felt like it was an issue, they could have gone back to the old one. They could have just saved, hopefully they saved the code. I mean, you would have to be a terrible developer, developer to make a new website and not save the code for the old one. Like you would have to actively delete the old code. Regardless, let's read some more stuff. To be clear, I do believe PicoTrade has done a lot of good. PicoTrade is a scam. I send cards, get points, and then get the cards I want. Where did I get scammed? Did I, did I miss it? So this is key. He doesn't send cards. If I give you infinite Pico points, which Wedge has, because every time he makes a video, he gets more and he gets payment directly from Pico Trade itself. If I give you infinite Pico points, why would you ever send a card because what you would be return what you would be receiving is more Pico points. Why would you with infinite Pico points need more Pico points? You wouldn't. This is a guy for 7 months couldn't send a signed bulk card to a patron paying $10 a month. Let me repeat this again. This is a guy that supposedly is trading on a platform where he has infinite points and no incentive to get more points, i.e. trades. And he is not a, the most reliable person when it comes to sending cards. 
even if you paid him money every month to send you a bulk card, you would never get the bulk card. And supposedly on this platform, he's sending cards. Like, there's so many of these things that when you put one and one together, it doesn't equal two for Wedge. So in his perspective, this is the greatest program ever. He just puts a list of things he wants, and because he has infinite Pico points, he gets them. He never has to go to the mail office. He never has to send. Why would you? I mean, if you're sending a card, you're getting more Pico points. But why do you need Pico points when you have infinite amounts of it? You have just coming in every video, you have tens of thousands coming in. I definitely understand the skepticism, but I think Pico Trade is great for the function. Rags into riches. It is a net sum game. And actually, it's, a, it's not a zero sum game. It's a negative sum game because shipping, you have to factor in shipping and stamps and packaging and all that stuff. Lost mail, it lost it. A lot of people don't calculate that unless you own a business. Yeah, some employees will take some stuff. Yeah, things will break. Yes, you know, thing, there might be an injury, God forbid, on work, and you need to have insurance for that. You know, insurance, work insurance, work-related insurance relating to the place that you uh, function. Yes, the site is great. Inflation is definitely something. Pico Trade is addressing it, implementing several ways to remove points from the system. One of those ways is to give Wedge all the points, right? So he can get the cards he wants. So let's get to today because, you know, that was in the past. I mean, it was only two years ago, but let's say, assume that he has changed his behavior. He has not. Because in that same video about Ultraman Masters, he shows the same behavior. Now, is he getting puker points from TCG Player? No, he's getting something better. He's getting cash. Cash, cash, cash. I used Pico Trade for years. That was just uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, even less. I made entire decks on the site. Again, if you have infinite Pico points, you would never make a single, the, the optimal way would be never to make a single trade. Right? And then just ask for cards and then trade your Pico points in for those cards. That's what is the cause of inflation. Wedge is 100% the cause of inflation. Because he's not putting the same amount of cards into your system he's taking out. Hence, inflation. Puka Trade is a lizard people who are pyramid scheming the Freemasons to cover up Roswell aliens. Wake up, sheeple. Here we have Tolarian Community College supporting Puka Trade, which he supported for a long time. How have I not seen this before? It all adds up. That's why you have to pay to trade foils. So I'm not saying that Pico Trade was not a good concept. It was a good concept. The concept was you can trade cards that you don't need into cards that you do need. Simple concept. The platform worked. It just, instead of wanting to grow slowly and be a real company, a real business, they went for the easy money. And the easy money was get the mana source, get the Tolarian Community College to promote, promote, promote. They asked me two times to promote them. I said their economics things didn't make sense, so I'm not going to promote them. I didn't take economics class. I took economics 101. I'm not like a Wall Street genius, but I could figure out, hmm, the math doesn't add up. So let's say we pay all of our employees, we pay our customer, or we, pay, we give all of our customers free points to begin with, and they have to sign up other customers to get more free points, and then we're going to pay these large personalities to... They even did a Vintage Magic League, right? Like, they were on Wizard of the Coast official website. They had, like, an actual 15-second commercial, and then they had their logo everywhere. I would be embarrassed to have their logo anywhere right now because now it's not a question. When I used to question whether or not this was a scam, people would say... It's not a scam. How can it be a scam when all the biggest YouTubers, all of them say that this is the best, this is the best thing since sliced bread? How can that be? Like, think about it for a moment. If all the people you're watching is, is on Pico Trade, they're really engaged, they're collecting points, then you don't think it's a scam because everyone's doing it. 
And there lies in the rub, is that no one can speak out against it because you become personal. The reason that Wedge doesn't like me and Tolarian doesn't like me is I spoke up against the monthly magic box and I spoke up against this. If you want to talk about the core reason that they don't like me, it's because of this. Because they, on the Facebook, which I wish I still had access to, obviously they deleted everything. We had a Facebook group. I said, hey guys, did you know that the monthly magic box is buying discount product that cannot sell on Dave and Adams that is being discounted 90, 95% and it's the crappiest. You can still buy those quote amazing Frost Titan playmats on Dave and Adams. I'm not kidding you. It's the same crap that they sold four years, like five years ago, they still have because no one wants it. And then there was a dude called Rocks and Box 90 and his values were insane. He would be like, this binder that you can buy for $2 with free shipping on Dave and Adams, this is $19.99. Let's calculate that. Wow, for $24, I got a box worth $200 of value. I'm, I'm watching this video. I'm saying, holy crap, this is all the stuff that cannot sell on Dave and Adams. And, I, and they knew it. They blanking knew it. Because I told them. And that's when Tolarian left the Facebook group out of probably embarrassment. And that's when Wedge left right after. And I told them about Pico Trade. I told them over and over again, and they wouldn't listen. They said I didn't get it. So we have a woman study, what, political science major and an English professor, an MA in English, because a BA is just not enough, right? Figuring out the economics. Now, it's okay to forgive them one time, the monthly magic box. But it is not okay for them to do the Pico trade or the TCG player or the channel fireball or the. How is that different? You know, how is that different? Like it's. Man, it, how how is this any different from telling your subscribers to go on TCG player and buy a creeping tar pit for fifteen dollars? When you know creeping tar pit is being reprinted, in a month. And you know that fifteen dollars. I mean, maybe Wedge is like a moo moo cow, and he doesn't get that a reprint of for something like Creeping Tar Pit will go down in price. Then why is a moo moo cow making all finance videos to tell all his subscribers what to buy? Top ten this to buy. Top ten that to buy. Buy this. Buy that. Like at, at some point in time, you gotta pick. You gotta say. Hey, this guy is not good at finance. I'm not good at finance, so I probably shouldn't tell people to buy Creeping Tar Pit. Or, hey, I'm telling people to buy Creeping Tar Pit because it makes me money. Moo Moo Cow.